topic is vaginal myomectomy. Uh, myomectomy means removal of the fibroids. It can be from the abdominal root, from the laparoscopically, and vaginal is also one of the root of uh, doing vaginal myomectomy. Now, we are seeing so many hot businesses in the recent uh, years. Number one is the child care services, mobile apps, mobile gourmet food. There are brain gyms also, destination weddings also, and the minimal invasive surgery has got its a big role. So vaginal surgeries, it should be the part of gynecological surgeries and it should be in the gynecological training. There should be. So uterine fibroids are the most common benign tumors which affect 20 to 30 percent of the reproductive age and the incidence increases approximately 70 percent of the age by the age of 40 years. Uh, approximately 30% of the uterine fibroids are associated with either the menopragia, sometimes there is a pelvic pressure, such urinary frenzy, subfertility, recurrent pregnancy loss, dysmenorrhea, dysuria, and sometimes in a nulliparous or a multiparous can they may be, or they can have a big uh, fibroids, and infertility is one of the reasons of having, the patient are having the fibroid and the patient can be, infertility can be there. So what are the choices of the root when we want to remove the fibroids? Number one is a classical strategy is by laparotomy, which is all the old strategy of removing the fibroid, big size fibroid, open the abdomen, remove it. Then the contemporary strategies, they say laparoscopy, operative hysteroscopy, and robotic assisted laparoscopy. But underutilized procedure is basically the vaginal root. Less being used, less being taught, less being thought about, that's the big problem. And how to choose the root, the choice of the root and its understanding the myomectomy not only depends on the size of the fibroid, what is the number of the fibroids, what is the location of the fibroids, anterior, posterior, fundal, where it is. And the most important when we choose the root, the skill of the surgeon and what are the facilities available at the setup where the surgeon is working. Then vaginal myomectomy basically it allows the surgical management of the uterine myomas. And we have, uh, de deliver it through vaginal route through which the myomas are removed. Uterine suturing can be performed and mainly applied most of the time unique sub posterior myomas. So there is a big fibroid on the posterior side. It's easy to remove through the vaginal route. And a vaginal route is applicable to anterior fibroids also. So we should have some eligibility criteria when we are doing the vaginal root myomectomy. Number one, there should be adequate vaginal access. The uterine mobility should be good. And the uterus size should be the moderate one. It should not be more than 250, 350 and we are not able to move or the locate. And the correct mapping of the uterus is not there. Whereas the location of the fibroid is not sure. So it's one of the points. Other eligibility criteria for the vaginal root is classical in a considered way. Again, by the myoma size, localization, and vascularization. That's another important point. It's how much the color flow flows into it. It has not changed the vascularity or any change into the uh, consistency of the fibroid. So it's very, very important. And it's basically, if we know all these things, so it's a gatekeeper complication for the surgery, surgical defects. Then another uh, criteria for the vaginal root is vaginal myomectomy has not been evaluated uh, post-operative cohort studies and randomized controlled trials in comparison to laparoscopy, laparoscopic assisted surgery, so the robust, uh, robotic assisted laparoscopic uh, myomectomy. So feasibility is well established situation, specialized team has been uh, described the size of the myoma could potentially be the reason for uh, abandoning the vaginal root. So people prefer not to use the vaginal root because of the size, because not they have not evaluated, no uh, good uh, feasibility of, is not established and they are not able to do it like that. So another, this is, this, but some studies have highlighted the higher the risk of abscess and hematoma of the pouch of Douglas, and the vaginal access into the pelvic cavities, which is probably underestimated the incidence in case of a laparotomy. Actually, there is no comparison between the laparoscopically, laparoscopically assisted and the vaginal myoma. And especially in the deep posterior myoma, supports have demonstrated feasibility and safety of vaginal myometry, even in the large myomas are there. So there, this is a thing we can go to the, uh, while doing the vaginal myometry through the anterior access. 
and by just opening the pouch of Douglas, there is a pouch of, this is a posterior excess, is very, very important. Just by giving the incision on the posterior side, enucleate the myoma or just hold the myoma and clamp the base of the myoma and we can deliver it out. Another way of in the anterior by going into anterior peritoneum and going to the pouch of the, uh, this anterior, um, you know, by cutting the peritoneum and we can reach and we can deliver it out. After removing, we can give a simple incision and remove it and give and, and suture it in a routine manner. We can do it in this is the way. Uh, one more eligibility criteria is which is not specific and is continued to the part of gynecosurgical training. Actually, uh, it should be included into the eligibility criteria or not to include into the eligibility criteria. But the future generation of the gynecological surgeons, if they are trained in doing many more things in a vaginal surgery, that this will be very, very important for them. Uh, um, another, the increasing use of laparoscopy that the vaginal root of myomeris is neglected, basically. And myomectomy, vaginal root is good alternative to laparotomy. So instead of laparotomy, try through vaginal root if possible, and then it just can be done. Um, some interstitial biomass, such as really not accessible, difficulty could be avoided using the laparoscopic assisted dissection. And however, the lap exploratory laparoscopy before my vaginal myomectomy is not useful to evaluate the feasibility of the procedure. So this is another important point. Then the post-operative complications. Why we are worried about the vaginal myomectomy? The most of the chances of infection may be there because the pelvic excess can form in the vaginal myomectomy is reported lecture. And then another, this is sometimes a bowel injury, hematoma, pelvic abscess, shock. These are another four important points one should keep in the mind while doing the vaginal myomectomy. And long-term outcomes, there can be a chances of post-cooperative additions. To our knowledge, there is no studies on concerning the additions after the vaginal myomectomy. But I think few studies by the there is a, and they have seen by laparoscopic examination performed 6 to 24 months after the vaginal myomectomy. And they found that it's a very less chances of having the additions and uh, this thing. And another long-term problem is some, uh, subsequent uh, infertility is another issue. Then the complications related to which is again the post -op operative complication, blood loss and transfusion and injury to the organ. Uh, integrity of the uterine scorn, the long term you can say or the immediate uh, post operative we can think about so the no rupture of the uterus during pregnancy or delivery after the vaginal memory is reported in the lecture and 14 reported pregnancies, 8 were associated with the unknown obstetric problem. And these patients underwent cesarean section at the term to reasons unconnected with the surgical history and normally five delivered normally. So there are things into the vaginal uh, literature, but the vaginal myomectomy is compared the scars following the laparoscopy and laparotomy. It's similar. If it is being done by the laparoscopic or it is being done by the uh, laparotomy or it has been done by the vaginal root, probably the integrity of the uterine scar has got the same parts. Now, there are few risk factors for the conversion of laparotomy under general anesthesia with a morselation technique. Attempt to remove myoma, colpotomy, no significant difference, but age, number of pregnancy, body mass index, size of myoma's ultrasonography, location of the subserous with a particle interstitially, and a previous exploratory laparoscopy is another important point. Then the hospital stay expected advantage of the vaginal approach over the laparotomy and laparoscopy so far as reduction into the length of hospital stay is with it. Morselation need better tissue morselation. Try to stay on the surface. Make sure that all the pieces are out. It can be a time consuming in the setting of a large calcified fibroids and 12 to 14 grams per minute, 1000 grams taken out, 25 to 83 minutes through the morselation less time consumed in comparison to laparotomy and laparoscopy. Uh, another important point is the limits of the vaginal stectum, vaginal myomectomy, how to limit it. Number one is uh, surgeon's experience is very, very important. Then what is the size of the fibroid? What are the numbers of the fibroids? Where is the location of the fibroids? And what is the ultimate goal of the surgery? Is it a fertility preservation or the volume reduction or she is having too much blood loss? Will they accept the blood transfusion? So many things are these are they limit the procedures. And the surgeon experience is a most important factor. Move strategically, 
is, is he able to control the situation? What are the gradually built up? If there is a need high volume, for example, uh, must have seen long many surgeries through vaginal route and vaginal myomectomy is one of it. And more than 50 per year become a really good rapid suturing is very, very important. Surgeon should be very fast in suturing. Uh, the thing is also another important point. We have talked about the integrity of the uterine scar and it is almost similar. And the conclusion wise, the vaginal myomectomy is visible. It's a safe surgical procedure with low morbidity, short hospital stay, could represent a valid alternative to open myomectomy, laparomyomectomy and laparoscopic assisted laparoscopic myomectomy. Adequate preoperative assessment, very, very important. Major twice, cut once. Consider appropriate nace of the surgery. Consider specific surgical tools available. Procedure termination need for the additional procedures and be aware of the risk and vigilant of the complications. And most important, know your surgical skills. So vaginal myomectomy depends upon the surgeon skills, availability, size and the fibroids and where it is. And it is a very, it is not, it is underutilized route, but vaginal route is one of the route and very, very important route for vaginal myomectomy. Thank you.